You're maybe in the process of applying to medical schools, and just when you thought you were done with tasks, here comes the next one, the AAMC preview exam. What even is it? Who needs to take it? How do you prepare? And what can you do to improve your score? In this video, I'll be taking a deep dive into everything that you need to know about the AAMC preview exam, from which schools require it, how it's structured, how to practice, and a powerful strategy that you can take to crush this exam with confidence. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Monju Med, and today I'm going to summarize every single video, podcast, and Reddit post that I've found on the AAMC preview exam, and also my own personal tips and tricks about how I was able to score in the 93rd percentile in just one day of studying for this exam. What even is a preview exam? This is a form of a SJT, which is a situational judgment test developed by the AAMC to evaluate core professional competencies that they highlight on their website. This is what medical schools believe are characteristics are essential for future physicians beyond just academics. It measures how you approach the real world, ethical and interpersonal challenges, things like teamwork, reliability, ethical responsibility, resilience, adaptability, service orientation, cultural competence, oral communication, and integrity. Medical schools are using this to assess your decision making and your professionalism before meeting you in your interviews. So which schools require or recommend the preview exam? As of 2025, the following medical schools require or strongly recommend or basically require the preview exam. There's a lot of California schools, UC San Francisco, San Diego, UCLA, UC Davis, and UC Riverside. And then you have University of Illinois, College of Medicine, University of Florida, Texas A&M, Morehouse School of Medicine, Carl, Illinois, the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth, Mercer University, University of North Carolina, Wayne State University, and the list is growing every single year. Pro tip, always make sure that you're checking the school's admission site for policies that may change year to year. So some of the logistics behind the exam. The cost is $100. There are multiple dates that are offered throughout the spring and the summer from March till September for when you can take the exam. It is a remote exam. It is taken online and proctored through a secure browser. There's about 75 minutes total to take the entire test. Remember how I said I scored the 93rd percentile? The scoring is basically a range from like a one being a low and then a nine being the high score. And you're given a percentile in a three number range for where you fall within this total range. And schools interpret this value in context with your entire application. So the exam format and the question types, there's 30 scenarios total, each with four to eight responses that you must rate the appropriateness for each response on a four point scale. One, very effective. Two, ineffective. Three, effective. Four, very effective. You might be like, what the heck does that even mean? You'll see situations like you're on a clinical team and your team leader speaks over you repeatedly. Give an idea, but you don't feel heard. So what might you do? Options might include one, tell the leader directly that you feel disrespected. Two, ask a peer for advice. Three, go to a supervisor. Four, say nothing. And then you must rate each response on that four point scale from in very ineffective to very effective. You're not ranking them in order or choosing one. You're going to evaluate each response and pick a multiple choice option from those four options that I had mentioned earlier. So what are some of the proper resources that are available? The AAMC, the writer of this exam, provides free official test materials, which are your best source since it is coming from the test creator themselves. There's a preview examination guide also from AAMC. I just looked at it. It is only nine pages long. So download that from the site and read it in entirety. There's also a practice exam, which is 30 full practice scenarios. And they also include scoring and rationales for each correct and incorrect ratings at the bottom. I mentioned that this is to assess some of the professional competencies. They actually have a website on this and I will link it in the description below. Check that out and make sure you read through that. And another note, if you're taking preview exam, you might also be taking something called the Casper exam. We'll have another video on that, so feel free to check that out. But some of the strategies may overlap from that, so feel free to use those and try to do birds with one stone there. So how do you take the practice test like the real thing? How do you simulate real test conditions? I want you to be able to set aside 75 uninterrupted minutes of your time to a computer that is not going to crash and plugged in. Then I want you to mimic the testing conditions as best as you can, including no breaks, no distractions, not getting on your phone, etc. And then I want you to print out or pull up a copy of the grading rubric 
and then go by question by question and why you might have rated something differently than the key. Don't just grade yourself, ask what value of the core competencies. So pull up that list again. What's this question directed at? This is where the growth happens. What was my own mental framework for answering preview questions? You don't need clinical experience to do well on this exam. You just need a professional mindset. Okay, I want you to be thinking of these four words as you are reading through the questions and the stems. Respect. It's the action respectable to others, patients, team members, supervisors, systems, etc. Disrespect is almost always a red flag and an easy way of ranking it as very ineffective. Two, responsibility. Are you taking ownership for the actions or are you shifting blame? Doctors have to take responsibility even when it's difficult. Three is reflection. Does the response involve some sort of introspection and seeking feedback if you're unsure? That would be a green flag. And then four, resolution. This is probably overlooked. Does the response actually move towards resolving the issue and answering the question at hand? Always apply this. And some other questions to ask yourselves are, is this professional? Is this actually helpful? Is this calm? Is this ethical? Is this team oriented? Some of the things you want to avoid are passive responses. So going back to that question I had earlier in the video, doing nothing would not be a correct choice there. On the other hand, if you're overly aggressive, if you're confronting people in public, also not good. Here's where that Casper tip kind of comes into play. You're always going to mention, I'm going to ask both sides of the party in a private setting in a not judgmental manner. Essentially the same thing here. You don't want to be overly aggressive with your confrontations in these situations here. And then three is obviously don't lie or be dishonest here. Four, don't do anything dangerous or unethical. So hopefully that framework kind of gives you some questions to think about if you're uncertain about a specific prompt or response. So hopefully these questions that you'll be asking yourself and these themes kind of help you answer these questions correctly. Once again, these things are respect, responsibility, reflection, and resolution. Here's my own personal tips and tricks. In my experience, it was harder to choose between effective and very effective more so than it was to choose between ineffective and very ineffective. Anything that was out of left field, doing something dangerous or lying to a patient, for example, those were always going to be very ineffective. So if it wasn't anything like that, then I would put it as ineffective. If it wasn't going to resolve the issue at hand. And to decide between effective and very effective, I would ask myself these two questions. If I was taking an active role in that STEM, and then two, am I adding another responsibility or adding something else for someone else to do? If I was one, showing that initiative and taking action myself, and then two, not adding onto someone else's workload, I would make that a very effective option. Whereas the other option, I would have marked it as an effective option if I didn't answer both of those questions correct. So hopefully my tips there help you with that part. The question, if there was anything vague that didn't fit some of the framework, in questions that we talked about earlier. Once again, this is not an exam that you can prepare a ton for. It is more about preparing your mindset. People who do best on this exam are familiar with the competencies that are being tested, they practice rating responses themselves, and they reflect on the frameworks that they had applied to the questions that might get wrong. If something completely whack just comes up on your exam, don't panic. It is a standardized test after all. They might be testing new different scenarios that they might include in future exams. It might be considered like an experimental topic. So don't panic, just move on and don't let it affect the future scenarios. Just trust your practice and keep going back to the framework. If you made it this far into the video, you're ahead of the game. Thank you so much. Give it a like if you liked the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the video, how you prepare for the exam yourself. If you like this video and want to be notified of future videos on my channel like this, consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications. It's been Mon Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care.